Right, in this video, we're going to be looking at how to calculate binomial coefficients. So on the left, we have Pascal's triangle. And what we're going to do to begin with is introduce some notation to refer to specific terms in Pascal's triangle. And the notation looks like this. So the way this notation works is that inside each pair of brackets, the top value refers to the row in the triangle we're looking for, and the bottom value refers to the entry we're looking for. So let's say we wanted to identify 10 here in Pascal's triangle. We start at row zero and count down, zero, one, two, three, four, five, so the fifth row, and then we count across, zero, one, two, and we find that the entry is five, choose two. And there is a formula to directly calculate any value in Pascal's triangle, any of these binomial coefficients. And the formula looks like this. It's in your formula book, so it's not one that you have to remember. And we would read this as n choose r, or ncr, and it equals n factorial divided by r factorial times n minus r factorial, where n is the row in Pascal's triangle you're looking for, and r is the entry, both of those starting from zero if you want to count up. Let's have a look at an example of actually calculating one of these binomial coefficients. Suppose we wanted to calculate five choose three. Well, the n would be five and the r would be three. So the formula says we do five factorial, put that on the top, and then we've got r factorial, which would be three factorial, and then n minus r would be five minus three factorial. Since five minus three is two, we can simplify this to five factorial over three factorial times two factorial. And then if we do that calculation, we get 10. Now in practice, you're unlikely to ever actually use this formula to calculate binomial coefficients by hand, because it's much more efficient to do it directly using your calculator. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in a later tutorial video. But as we'll see in later examples, there are some times when you do need to use this formula. I'd also like to look at one other property of Pascal's triangle and binomial coefficients that's relevant to what we're going to do. And that's to notice the symmetry of the triangle. So for example, consider the value four here, which is on the fourth row. We would write this binomial coefficient as four choose one. And we get another four on the same row on the other side here. And this would be four choose three. So we could write down an equation that says four choose one equals four choose three. Let's pick out another two. We could choose 10 here. This would be row five and it's zero, one, two, the second entry. So five choose two is the same value as five choose three. And so we could say five choose two equals five choose three. Looking at these two examples, can you think of a way of generalizing that rule so you would know when two coefficients are equal to each other? Just pause the video for a second and see if you can find a general rule. Okay, welcome back. The rule we're looking for is if you look at the bottom value in each pair of brackets and you add them together, you should get back to the value at the top. Same works here, two plus three, equals five. And that means we could answer a question like this. Given that 12, four equals 495, write down the value of 12, eight. Well, since four plus eight equals 12, these two binomial coefficients must be equal. And we can say that 12, eight equals 495. 